For those of you who might be new to the session, welcome to this uh, event, which is part of Let's Learn Live in the TESOL Call IS Electronic Village this year. Uh, this next session um, is Jamboard, uh, transferring, transferring communicative learning activities to the virtual environment. And it uh, is going to be presented by Dana Saito Stayberger and Rachel Fernandez, who will be joining us shortly. Um, and they are going to be talking about how communicative learning can happen in a virtual environment with Jamboard um, and how they have created Jamboard with uh, things such as pictures of clothing and students um, can do some creating, describing, and then a partner can do recreation um, through his or her own computer. So um, they're going to share some examples of how language can be authentically exchanged using Jamboard. And hopefully you all will leave with several interactive ideas. So uh, welcome Dana, and hopefully we will have uh, Rachel with us here in just a moment. We do apologize, Rachel will be here any moment. She's in California, so this time change, uh, the difference in time has been confusing to us, but you will uh, have access to all the different resources that she's put together, very uh, easy to access. So um, we apologize again for starting a little bit late, but please take the time right now to flip through that Jamboard and fill in and just think about how you might be able to use it knowing, yeah, how you can, have people participate um, on a scale or just as icebreakers, et cetera. And you're welcome, Dana, if you'd like to screen share the, uh, the Jamboard just so people can see what's oh, going on. Sure. Hey, Dana, I'm here. Okay, great. <laughs> So this is Rachel, everyone. Hi, everybody. Rachel's math is not very good, and I thought I had an hour more. <laughs> OK, welcome. Am I sharing or are you sharing? You want me to share? OK. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So we are here at TESOL, and I am going to share my whole screen with you. And at the end of this um, presentation, hold on. Um, we will give you a set of the slides and um, the slides are kind of they're the slide our slides are designed so they're self explanatory like a walkthrough of what we're doing so um, here we go, maybe Dana you can monitor the chat because I see like seven things on there so far and oh happens to all of us, thank you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, if you haven't used Jamboard before, then um, Jamboard is a virtual whiteboard that everybody can post on. But we want to show you today how you can also think of it as a virtual desk. Um, so you can use any kind of manipulative that you would usually use in the classroom or even like a virtual game board. So things with cards or um, things that you exchange or move around on a board um, can also be used on, on, on Jamboard. So um, I'm going to give you just a few um, ideas about how to set it up. And then we're going to take you to a Jamboard and we're going to post some things for our own class Jamboard. And then um, we will go through and we have uh, several decks of slides with different ideas for different kinds of activities. And um, we'll run the, through those as, as fast as we can. But again, you get everything at the end so you can go through at your own pace. So setting up your Jamboard, um, I'll go kind of quickly through this and then we'll get to it later if you have questions. So first, um, to create a Jamboard, you go to Jamboard, you can Google Jamboard or in your drive in the um, little grid of dots, you can find uh, Jamboard. And then there's a big plus sign in the bottom right corner and that's how you add a new one. Once you add a Jamboard, it opens up to a blank board and your tools are all along the left side. So you have um, a pen, eraser, um, select is just, um, I never use select, it's just to click on something to edit it on the screen. You can just click twice. Sticky notes are the 
big thing. You can also add images and shapes and text box, and you can use a laser pointer also on your Jamboard. So um, you can set the background, and this is really good if you want to have some kind of template where your students move things around on it, but you don't want them to accidentally pick up the whole background. Um, you can set your background so things can be sl slide slids, they can slide around on it without wiggling it. And um, you have choices that Jamboard has, and then you can also do a picture. Um, to see your Jamboard in kind of like a longer slides, so you can see everything at once, it's this arrow up at the top. And when you click that, it opens and you can move um, slides around in order and you can duplicate slides. And um, sometimes I call them slides, sometimes I call them pages. I don't know, or calling them boards maybe, but there you go. Um, and then you can add a page. Um, in between if you want to use this sliding thing above. And then the three dots, you can click there to delete a page or to um, copy a page, duplicate. So when you have your Jamboard ready, all you need to do is um, set it up so your students can interact with it. So if you haven't used Jamboard before, again, you can run through these slides and see the directions, but here is what you do. There are four main clicks to the sharing settings. Click share in the up, upper corner, and then it will open to this screen here. And you want it to be editor if you want your students to be able to interact with the board, which is what you want to do, because if you didn't want them to do that, you would just use a PowerPoint and you wouldn't have a Jamboard, right? So you want it to be on editor. And then if you have all of your students logged into your same Google class or something, you can um, do it restricted and, and invite them or have, have them have to be logged into your class. But anyone with the link means that anyone can get on. So you're, you're good to go. And then do not forget to click done because sometimes I share things and I think, oh, I click, 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 and I forgot to do the done and it, nothing stuck and it didn't save and my students are like, we can't move anything. So don't forget done. Okay. Um, and then when you wanna share it, you just copy the link as you would a Google Slides or you know anything else. Um, it's set and you can see anyone with the link can um, edit it. And I copy the link. Sometimes I just put the link in the chat, like we are going to do with you in just one moment. Sometimes I post the link on Canvas or um, I use Canvas. So whatever learning, learning platform you're using. Um, just a couple of technical notes about this. Um, there are two ways you can share your Jamboard. So you can um, share it that uh, everybody is on the same board and everybody is moving things around. But if you have a lot of people in your class, or if you don't want one group seeing what another group or one student seeing what another student is doing, then you can have them make a copy. So um, we will show you this in a second, but we do an information gap. And so obviously we don't want the students being on the same Jamboard because one person would move the jacket and then the other student would see the jacket move and wouldn't have to move the jacket. So in that case, we have them make a copy. And to make a copy, it's very simple. You just go up to the ERL, you backspace until you reach this slash and then delete everything and write copy. And now when you do that and copy that link that ends with the word copy to your students, when your students click on it, they will get this page and it will have a blue button that says, do you wanna make a copy? And they click yes. And now every student has their own copy, but they can't see what other people are doing on their Jamboard. So it depends on what kind of activity you wanna do. I know I am going really fast. I feel rushed, but we wanna get you on a Jamboard. So, um, I will come back to this. I'm going to um, share a link with you in the 
So it's the, link that, it's the Jamboard 2022. So that's yeah. when I gave to them all. And so they already started. Oh, perfect. Out. They're probably on doing tons of stuff and not even listening to me, just like the <laughs> students do. Okay. So I will, um, I will share my screen again. Here we go. And I am going to, let's see, which one was it called? Was it this? Yes, there we are. Everybody's on our Jamboard. So now you can see, um, let's see if I do, if I, you probably are all looking at it on your own computers now. So you can see things moving around. We've got somebody that's even shown their hungry on the globe. So awesome. So um, we have several pages. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of people here. Pete in San Francisco, Farzan in Halifax, Canada. This is so cool. Dana, you're in Pittsburgh. Cool. Welcome, everybody. This is very cool. So if you're looking, um, if you're looking at my screen, you see what I'm seeing, but you don't have to be seeing what I'm seeing. If we have the all the same link, we can all interact with the slides at the same time. Okay. Um, so I put two pages here for where are you? People went from one to two. You um, change up at the top. So we said, what is your name and where you are now? And this is good. So we've got some people that use it all the time and we've got some people that are kind of new. Good to know. So this is an activity that you could use in class just to um, gauge where your students are or what they know before you go into an activity. Very helpful to know. Um, and I put two pages there in case we had a lot of people, but you guys all know how to resize the post-its so we can make them very small, we can make them big. Um, and go ahead and move your post-it to wherever you are on the spectrum and we'll see. Very cool. Okay, oh, I accidentally clicked on something. Shoot. Okay. Um, Did I close it by accident? Probably. Okay, we are going to um, we are going to go back. Wait, hold on. If you've lost your Jamboard, this is how you find it. I'm going to go over here to my to my Google stuff and go just to Jamboard. It's in my drive somewhere, but sometimes I forget what I name people. Name people. Now my presentations are people. Um, and I'm going to reopen us. Dana, how am I doing on time? It, it's 1.45. And so I think we have 15 minutes left. Perfect. OK, so um, we know where people are. And we know now, um, kind of like some people, it's totally new. If you're a totally newbie person, then um, at the end of this presentation, when you get the slides, you can, you can go through and read them more carefully and open a sample and, and try out all of the different directions. OK, here we go. Um, oh, and the last one was share a recommendation for the for the conference and people are already sharing stuff. I'm going to come back to this at the end. Okay, I'm going to go back to our slide presentation and um, show you how the the slides are organized. So we've um, made four main sets of slides for you today and um, they're kind of organized loosely in categories. Um, the first one is icebreakers. And after this, um, after this presentation, when you come to the slides, this link to icebreakers Jamboard will be live and you can, you can go there. Um, I'm not making it live now because uh, I want to make it so that you all have your own copy of it so that it doesn't change a whole bunch because other people are, are putting things on it. So. We'll get to that. Um, I'm going to show you uh, the slides just quickly. We have different activities, a screenshot of the Jamboard and then the directions off to the side. I'm gonna run through this quickly and then I'm going to show you um, what some of the activities look like. So we've got a how do you feel, a four corners, using it straight up as a whiteboard and code names, which is kind of a interesting idea. Um, we've got brainstorming topics, so for writing, for discussion topics, 
for uh, KWL charts, um, writing sentences. We've got speaking activities um, for advanced classes and for lower classes. I'm going to show you in a second how to do info gaps using Jamboard. Um, a gallery walk, which is very conducive to Jamboard design. Um, a pronunciation word maze. Um, another speaking activity where students move cards. And then there's so much you can do with vocabulary. I just have a couple of ideas here, but the Jamboard has a lot more um, slides on it. Matching pictures on words. So anything where students can move cards around like you would on a table, you can do on this. Matching opposites, categories, putting words into different categories, um, filling out sentences, like kind of fill in the blank things, completing sentences, all stuff you can do with vocabulary. And I will come back to that at the end. So we're going to start with um, brainstorming. So what do you think, Dana? Should we share this in the, in the chat or not yet? Do you want people to get on? Um, I, th I think we only have 11 minutes. I think they want you to maybe explain some of the activities. Okay, so I'll just go through and explain some of these activities. Mm -hmm. And then again, you can explore on your own. Um, so here is a brainstorming where I put um, the different topics and the students had to add sticky notes to um, the under the, the category. So we were looking to see if we could find three reasons for a three reason paragraph. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is from our colleague Gail and she has a um, upper level multi-skills class. So she has a lot of brainstorming things where they she puts them in groups, gives them a, a jam board and they post all of their ideas. Um, here's another one from her. Um, and the students posted the pictures and the sticky notes of what their concerns were about too much screen time. Um, and this is another brainstorming one where she made it a grid and each um, group got a page on the same Jamboard. And then they, the students put their initials and went into breakout rooms and discussed what they were most interested in. Um, this was an interesting one. I like this idea that she, um, Gail used again, where she had um, the main idea was post your ideas about what you know. It's like a KWL chart. Um, what you know is in yellow. What you want to know is in green. And then thoughts about becoming a citizen were in blue. So here is an example, group one, of what they wrote. And so they went into a, um, a room together and they posted their different comments. Dana, so there's been a request yeah. to, to go over some of the speaking activities. I think maybe those are a little bit more rare than these. Maybe. Okay. Or, or wait, this yes. is a good one too. And for that, that one was a good one too, the information gap. But. No, well, that's what I was going to. I was going to speaking. I landed on a different page. Okay. So <laughs> speaking ideas. Here are some speaking ideas for Jamboard. So the first one is an information gap. So what I did was I made a calendar and I made the background just using a PowerPoint and, and saving it. But you could screenshot anything and make a background. And then I picked some pictures and the students make a copy. So one student gets a copy of the Jamboard, another student gets a copy of the Jamboard, and one student says, okay, in the morning he swims on Monday. On Tuesday afternoon he watches TV. Uh, he always has coffee on Friday. And so one student tells the, um, tells the other student, uh, sorry, one student tells the other student what to do, just like an info gap. Um, the thing with this is you have to have the students make a copy or else they're moving the same pictures on the same board. I have actually used this in a live classroom where my students had their laptops and they loved it. So this is one idea for a, an info gap. Here is another idea where you just make a man and then um, one student can say, okay, he's wearing a yellow jacket. And then the other student has to follow along on their Jamboard. He's wearing, I don't know, 
these kind of orangey sunglasses and a purple hat because he's super stylish. And they love that moving things around. Last idea, but not last idea. Third idea for, for, a, um, for an info gap would be, I put all of these pictures and the way I put them is I went over here to add an image. I went to Google search and I just searched like sofa, right? And then, and then I spent 15 minutes deciding what kind of sofa I wanted in the living room. Um, and so the students can say, okay, there is, shoot. <laughs> I did it again. It's my mouse pad. I've lost it. Hold on. Any questions while I reopen that? No? 50, I see 56 comments. That makes me kind of like, oh my God, I'm not paying attention to my students. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Here we go. Okay, so the room. So they can say like the picture is above the um, above the fireplace, and then they say, oh, the picture with the palm trees or the dark picture. There's a TV above the, and they can move that. They can say a dog is in the kitchen, and then my students had a ton of fun and said a giant dog is in the kitchen. So they love that visual part of it. Um, here are some other ideas. This was from a more advanced class where the students had to put their um, initials on a spectrum of whether they agreed or disagreed with a, a statement. And sometimes I wrote the statement and sometimes I just said the statement. Here is an idea where we watched a lecture several times in kind of an intermediate um, listening speaking class and then I made this jam board with the main vocabulary from the um, from the lecture and the, the question was just what was the lecture about and I put the students in a breakout room and had them time each other so the first person had to say oh, the lecture was about slang. And um, he talked about how words make your identity and um, slang is really widespread. And one student would time another student and, for one minute and they would use all of the words. And then the next, it would go, the next person would get timed for 45 seconds. And they could repeat everything the first person said, but they'd try to use even more words to kind of activate vocabulary and put it into the, the active use and at the same time, review the material that they listened to in the lecture. Um, here is a pronunciation maze. So I just made a grid. I don't know if you've seen these before, but it's a word stress maze. It's all vocabulary from the unit that my students were doing. And I just put all these little arrows on the side. And so what the students have to do is they have to move from attitude down to the bottom. I can't see what the word is because my Zoom pictures are leadership. In leadership. And then um, going through the same word stress of da, da, da. So they go attitude, constantly, integrate, frequently, positive, benefit. They get to benefit and then they have to go inevitable. No, general, benefit, general. And then they move, they make the arrows move through the maze. So it's something that I would do usually with a piece of paper in the classroom, but by putting it on a jam board, the students have something to do, um, which is a main point here is that when I give the students the links to these and post them, like even if I have my students in different groups, I make four different jam boards, I post links, group A, group B, group C. And then when I send them to a breakout room, I can see all of the links at the same time and I can switch tabs and I can see which group has arrows to general and which group has arrows up at Evolve. And then I can post something right on the Jamboard while they're working and say, whoa, 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 guys, Evolve, come on. Or I could go into their breakout room and tell them that they're on the wrong track. Okay, am I running out of time? Yep. Um, 
I think that you have to do this one and then um, maybe I'll share your email address and so they can email you and I also put the, the the link to where I will upload this after we finish doing this. Okay, so um, this one is the same idea for word stress. The words were in, written out in syllables and the students had to change the color of the stressed syllable. So I'm just gonna go back to the, you guys, when you get to the Weebly that um, Dana has, has shared with you, the last slide of our presentation looks like this. It has just a couple of notes about um about copying pages and things and then we have emails for all of us so you guys can get in touch and then we have our own jamboard so on our own jamboard that you got at the beginning there is a page for questions i will revisit that after this and post answers to whatever is on there and then i will read your recommendations for what i should go check out at the conference yeah, all in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Jamboard is still open after this. Oh, yeah, that's true. They, you guys have that li the link to the Jamboard. So if you are writing a long question, finish it up. No problem. You have you have time. I will revisit the board later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll I upload this in a couple minutes so you guys can have time to work through it. And then if you have questions, then you could just email Rachel or Gail. Or if you send it to me, I'll forward it to the right person. <laughs> or Dana. Or Dana, you can email Dana too. Okay. Excellent. Well, everyone in the audience, thank you um, for your questions that have been coming in. And I think as you can see from Rachel and Dana's enthusiasm and the fast and furious demonstration that we just got that uh, Jamboard is really only limited by your imagination and with the ideas that they've shared and the tools that they are going to supply through examples, you are going to have an amazing array of ideas for creating jams that can be tailored to your own learning context. Um, it's highly adaptable in terms of age, level, um, subject or content area within your classroom. So um, I think uh, Dana and Rachel, that you really got everyone excited and fired up about the possibilities of Jamboard. So thank you for presenting with us today. Thanks. I see one question in there. Where are the links to the Jamboards? They will all be embedded in the slides. So if you get the slides, you've got everything in one, one package. Yeah, on the blue screens, we'll, we'll link that so you can open up all of the um icebreakers at one time and they'll all be in one Jamboard so you can okay. just copy the pages. Right? And then it says, where do we get the slides? Did they get a link in the? Yeah, so I'm going, so I'll, I'll put it up again. It's the, um, it's TESOL technology and yeah, I'll put it right here. It's our Weebly. So we will, we will post that on our Weebly um, momentarily. Yeah. yeah, it's not there right now. I, we want it, we'll download it and we'll put it in right now. Yeah. Um, if you go to that link that was just shared by Dana in the chat right now, it won't be there yet, but it will be there and you will have lots of time at your leisure to explore these tools um, and areas where they've allowed you to contribute. Um, you will have time to do some hands-on exploration. Uh, we are at uh, our, our time for this presentation. Um, if our presenters would like to hang around for a couple of minutes, they're welcome to do so. Um, but I do wanna be respectful of uh, your time audience. Um, before we sign off, I do want to share just for a moment um, that we covered this topic. Let's see. Um, in last year's Electronic Village. Um, so we have a similar section of our Electronic Village website this year, um, but I did want to, I'll share the link here as well, um, but we have got some different resources available for um, using Jamboard in the classroom, um, in addition to the many amazing ideas that uh, Dana and Rachel just shared now. Um, and you can see that there are some similar tools as well. Um, that are shared here. So um, this is all by way of saying that this presentation today uh, is part of the Computer Assisted Language Learning Interest Sections Electronic Village, which is free and open to all of you, uh, regardless of how you are participating or not in the main convention this week. Um, and we do have a schedule of events that is continuing through today and tomorrow 
and several asynchronous hands-on learning activities. And as last year, we featured uh, Jamboard as one of our tools. This year, um, we've got resources on Wakelet, Genially, um, Mentimeter, and we've got lots of fun live polls um, that you can participate in around the clock. And we also have some information on using Twitter for professional news and development, um, in addition to our schedule of live and recorded uh, resources that you can access here on the EB page and which I will share in the chat. And I will share that uh, Jamboard link, Joseph, I see your question there um, as well. So. Um, thank you, thank you, Dana and Rachel. Um, I'll, I'll uh, leave the uh, room open here if people want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, you all are welcome to turn your camera on or turn your mic on, um, but I will go ahead and stop the recording and thank you all for participating today and I'll continue to update some resources here in the chat for you. Great, thanks. I'll stay on for a minute if anybody has questions. <laughs> 